My next guest is Dr. Bill Brooks, a neurosurgeon with Baptist Health. Welcome, Dr. Brooks. Thank you for having me. Now, you've been practicing a, a while, and you've seen a lot of things. You see brain tumors, you see back pain, you see a lot of neurosurgical things, but a lot of what you see, or some of what you see, is stroke. What is a stroke? Well, a stroke is a affliction of the brain as a result of either too much blood, a hemorrhage, for example, an intracerebral hemorrhage, or on the opposite side, not enough blood in the brain, which would be a, an ischemic stroke. And that's a garden variety of stroke. That happens about 10 to 1 to a hemorrhage. That's what we commonly call a stroke, is when there is a blockage of an artery that goes to a vital part of the brain and stops function of that area of the brain. Instead of a heart attack, like a brain attack. That's exactly right. Now, what are some of the symptoms? What's something that she says, boy, I'm, I'm having a problem here. I need to get it looked at. Well, the, the symptoms of a stroke uh, coming on generally are numbness in one side of the body or the other, the face or the arm, and it may be very fleeting. It may be seconds and then goes away. Unexplained numbness, unexplained weakness of an arm, face, or a leg, double vision or loss of vision in one eye, going blind in one eye for a minute or less and it comes back to you and you think, gosh, I'm just getting old and I'm supposed to have this spell, but that's a warning of a stroke. People who have those spells and recover have what we call TIAs or transit ischemic attacks. The significance of that is that a large percentage of those people will go on to have a stroke within the first two weeks after their first symptom. So the importance is of recognize those symptoms of weakness or numbness on one side of the body or the other, loss of vision, inability to speak. If anyone has those symptoms and it clears, they should go to the emergency room immediately. Now you mentioned going to the emergency room. It's not something you want to ignore because time is of the essence, I assume. Absolutely. Time is brain and brain is time. Is there a certain amount of time like if this has been present for a couple of days, you don't go, or you go after a couple of minutes? Well, I think you should go any time you have a stroke. Uh, we'd like to see people within the first four hours. If we see them within the first four and a half hours, then we can give them medicine that will break the clot or bust the clot uh, that's there and potentially open up blood vessels and thereby reverse a stroke or limit the size of the stroke. It's very, very important to get to the emergency room as quick as possible. Now, that's if you've had a stroke. What can you do to prevent it from happening? Strokes and prevention are like anything else. There are some things that you can do about and some things you can't do anything about. For example, uh, the risk of stroke is increased as we mature. So if you're mature, there's nothing you can do about that. Well, you are mature. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing you can do about that. On the other side of the token is, if you have diabetes, hypertension, if you smoke, those are risk factors. If you've had a heart attack, your, your risk of stroke is much higher than if you haven't. And if you've had one of these TIEs that we've spoken about. So the risk factors generally are high blood pressure, diabetes and cholesterol, smoking, and previous vascular disease, either a myocardial and a fractional heart attack or a TIA that you've had in the past. If you had a TIA and your doctor recognized that and does a workup, what kind of things do they look for to, to find the, maybe the source of the stroke or fixable cause of the stroke? Well, the things they're going to look at are going to be primarily two. They're going to look at blockage of the carotid artery, which is the artery in the neck, um, and if you have a blockage of that carotid artery, it can be opened either surgically or with a stent, uh, a metal device similar to the heart. The other thing we look for are irregularities of the heart, a condition called atrial fibrillation. And we know that people who have atrial fibrillation have an increased risk of stroke. By knowing what's the cause of the stroke or what it's linked to, either blockage of the blood vessel or from the heart, then one can tailor treatment either medically or surgically. Well, a lot of my patients, we <clears throat> do the carotid ultrasound, they have a blockage. That blockage is different than a heart. I mean, you can have 50%, 80%. When is the blockage, oh man, I gotta open this artery up? Well, that's a good question. And it's a bit in a black box right now. In the old days, 
six months ago, we thought that the de percentage of blockage was the determining factors whether you should open an artery up, be it 80% or 70%. So someone who has no symptoms at all, completely asymptomatic, comes into your office and you listen to their neck and they have signs of obstruction of a blood vessel and you do an ultrasound or a, a simple non-invasive test of the artery and you find they're 80%, you would send that off to a vascular surgeon, neurosurgeon, or someone to fix that artery and they would fix that artery thinking that they're reducing the risk of stroke in the long run. What we've recently found out is that it's not so much the blockage of the artery, but it's the stability of the plaque. Uh, what do I mean by stability? A plaque can be calcific or have calcium in it, can be very firm, and those plaques are very stable, unlikely that they will rupture. It is the rupture of the plaque that spews all that material in the artery upstream to the brain and causes the stroke. So if we can identify an unstable plaque, then those are the ones that we are more aggressive on than those that are stable. So if you have a patient who is 80 years old, who has an 80% blockage and the plaque is stable, they may need nothing. They may need nothing. Whereas if you have a 50 year old who has a blockage of an artery that's 60% but their plaque's unstable, they may need intervention, either medically or surgically. And when you say surgically, it's a, there's an open operation and there's a stent. That's correct. When do you decide what to do? At the present time, stents are considered investigational. Uh, they can be deployed only on certain circumstances. That is, if the surgical risk is too high and or if you're on a protocol, a, a randomized controlled trial. Uh, otherwise, uh, surgery will be the treatment of choice. So if you want to do something to maybe prevent stroke, are there supplements? Do you take an aspirin? Any of those things helpful? Stroke prevention in the long run is going to be aspirin therapy or platelet inhibitors. Uh, everyone sees Plavix on the television, and that's true. Uh, the use of a statin drug such as uh, Crestor or Lipitor, one of the statin types of drug, it works. If you have atrial fibrillation, uh, a blood thinner is work, and the, the workhorse has been warfarin or Coumadin, but there are newer agents and pharmacological uh, agents on the market now that are safer and work just as well. Well, thanks for the information. It's great. We hope tonight you've kept somebody from maybe having a stroke. I hope so, too. There thanks for having me. We'll be right Very back. Appreciate it.